So it's Easter week and I'm driving around and saw somebody get pulled over this morning. Uh, they were doing like 40 in a 25 right in front of school while school was in session. The, the children were walking across the street. And here's the thought that, that entered my mind. I, I wonder if anybody has ever been pulled over by a police officer. They knew what they were doing was wrong. We, we all know that we all break the law when we're behind the wheel from time to time. Uh, hopefully not too much. But I wonder if anybody's ever pulled over and said to the police officer, but officer, I, I didn't steal anything today. Sir, I haven't stolen anything. I've, I've never even murdered anybody, not one time. I've, I've never committed rape. Um, I've never gone into a 7-Eleven and, you know, held them up for their money. Uh, I, I didn't even roll that stop sign back there. I, I came to a complete, so I don't, I don't think I deserve this ticket. Uh, I wonder if anybody's ever done that. My, my guess is probably not. Um, if you get pulled over for speeding and you know you're speeding, you deserve the ticket. You, you might not want it, but that's, but you broke a law. You were disobedient. You broke the law. Um, and, and you deserve the punishment. Now the punishment might be a fine or, you know, whatever the case may be is for that particular law. But we generally don't tell people how many laws we haven't broke when we're getting in trouble for one we have. Well, so I'm thinking about this during Easter week and I think what a, what a great illustration um, because we all have broken laws. We've all made mistakes. We've all missed the mark. God tells us uh, through Paul in Romans, in Romans 3, for all have sinned or missed the mark and fallen short. Well, we all make mistakes um, and, and we all do things wrong from time to time. We, scripture tells us we've all sinned and fallen short, every, every one of us. Uh, but he continues to say in Romans 6, for the wages of sin is death. So what we know is that as humans, we do things wrong. We've sinned against our creator and the wages of those sin is death. Now, the first question that kind of comes to mind is, well, first of all, why are, why is the wages of sin death? That's a, could be a whole nother big question, but I had it explained to me like this. Let's say you have an 11 year old kid and your 11 year old kid has an older brother, 14 or 15. If you're, if your child punches his brother in the face, just says, no, punches his brother in the face. Is he going to get in trouble? Probably. He did something a little wrong. He's going to get in trouble for it. What if that 11 year old kid screams no and punches his infant baby, his two month old baby brother in the face? Is that it's the same? It's the same action, right? He just punched somebody in the face, but is his consequence going to be greater because of who he affected? What if that same 11 year old kid screams no and punches his mother in the face? Do you think the parents of that child are going to discipline that children different because they punched the mother in the face? Same action. All he did was punch somebody in the face. What if that same 11 year old kid was getting talked to by a police officer and he screamed no in the police officer's face and punched the police officer in the face? Now what's going to happen? So you see the same actions has different consequences based on who the action is done against. Well, what if we do that same action, commit a crime against the creator? Think of how exponentially larger the consequences of that action is. But I hope you haven't stopped watching yet because there's good news. And that's what this week is all about. This It, it happens to not be about bunnies and eggs and, and all that. This week is about the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ. So Romans 6, 23, that same verse that says the wages of sin is death goes on to say, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ. Maybe you're asking yourself, well, why would I want that? If I don't love God, I don't love God. I die and I die. Well, here's something that maybe a whole lot of churches don't necessarily bring up or a whole lot of people don't bring up. But that, what, what is this death? What does this death mean? 
there's a whole lot of people that'll tell you a whole lot of things about hell. Um, I don't know, so I'm not going to tell you in this video what it's like because I've never been there. Um, and I'm confident that I'm not going. Uh, however, what I do know is that hell or death will be an e eternal forever and ever and ever. An eternal separation from God. Now, why is that important? Because what we know is that all good things come from God. So despite popular songs and popular pop culture theories out there, hell's not going to be where the party is. Because all good things come from God. So just take a minute and think about that for a minute. If all good things come from him, the good things that you taste, the fun that you have, the enjoyment that you get to have with your husband or your wife and the bonds of scriptural marriage. All good things come from him. God is pro-pleasure. Eternal separation from that is eternal misery. So what I want to share with you today, friends, is that despite the fact that we are all sinners, we've all missed the mark and we are all deserving of death. There is a free gift, and that gift is eternal life in Christ. Romans 5 tells us, but God shows us his love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He died in our places. He was willing, because he loved us, to accept the consequences of our sins by living a perfect life. And that's what we're celebrating this week as Holy Week, as we're in the middle of Holy Week, is that on Good Friday, Christ was nailed to a cross and all of our sins, if we choose to believe in him, he, he took the consequences of those, of those sins. So we don't have to suffer for eternity. We can live in eternity with the Father. Acts 16.31 tells us, believe in the Lord and you will be saved. So how do I get this? How do I get this eternal life? What if I, I realize, yeah, you know what? There's plenty of things that I've done wrong in my life and, and I am deserving of, of eternal punishment, but I don't want that. Is, is there hope for me? I have good news. There is hope for you. There is no sin too big or too great or too many to keep you from the kingdom. All you have to do, it's a free gift. And all you have to do is believe in the Lord and you will be saved. Now, what does that word mean? Does that mean that all I have to do is believe that he was crucified? Yeah, that, that's not the kind of belief that this is talking about. The word belief is probably better understood as trust. Place your trust in him. You see, you can believe that a medication, if you're a diabetic, you can believe that the insulin in the syringe is going to do you good. I believe what the doctors say. I, I believe that it, but does it help you if you're a diabetic? If you don't put it in your body, if you don't trust in the medication in that syringe and let it do its job, not, not the same kind of belief, right? But when you believe enough to take it, to take that medication and let it do its job, so I hope that illustration has helped you understand the difference in belief. Don't miss this opportunity, friends. All you have to do is believe and place your trust in Christ and the gift that he has given you in salvation and taking on your sins because it's something that you cannot do yourself. If you're planning in any way on helping out or paying for your own sins, I, I challenge you to rethink because you're not capable of being good enough. Just like the illustration in the very beginning, it doesn't matter how many good things you did. If you broke the law, there is a consequence. Lucky for us, there's somebody who is willing to take the consequence for us so we can live for eternity and reign with God.